If you're in the market for your own personal airplane, sooner or later this question will come up. Should I go certified or experimental? In this video, I'm going to go over six points for you to consider to help you make that decision. We're starting right now. If you're watching this, you're probably in the middle of searching for your own personal flying machine, the key to faraway adventures and exciting locations, all without having to go through TSA lines or airport layovers. I was doing the same thing this time last year, constantly hitting the refresh button on Barnstormers, just waiting for that perfect airplane to show up. Now most of my flight time is in certified Cessnas, but the more I looked, the more I started to question, what's going on with this experimental thing? What's it all about, you know, more than just a cool sticker on the side of a plane? So let's get into it. So point number one, first thing we have to define these terms. What the heck is a certified airplane anyway? What we mean when we say that is that particular aircraft is type certified to part 23 specifications. There's a large amount of strict specifications and testing that go into each individual one, whether it be a Piper Cherokee or a Beach Bonanza. But that also typically means more money. Certified aircraft are generally mass produced in a large factory. Now an experimental aircraft, it refers to its airworthiness certificate, which is titled experimental. Experimental can serve multiple roles, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to be talking about home builds and kit planes. Now, as I say home built, you may be thinking of where it's taken to a shed where a man called Lee fits it with a Mondeo engine. And what that means in many cases, there is a central factory that handles the, the design and the engineering of the type, but either a kit or a set of plans is produced and then sent out to the builder, whoever that may be. And that person usually builds it themselves in their garage, their basement, or anywhere else they can get it, and then goes through an airworthiness process with the FAA to make sure it's safe to fly. To sum that up, certified aircraft are manufactured and tested to very specific regulations. But that doesn't mean experimentals aren't. Most kit manufacturers do plenty of in-house testing. Hold it. Wow. And that brings us to point number two. We have to define our mission and our budget. If you've been in aviation for any length of time, you've probably learned that every single aircraft is a compromise between performance, capability, and fuel burn. If your mission is flying the whole family around at high speed all over the country, you're going to burn a lot of fuel and have higher maintenance costs doing it. It's just how it is, but it's such a great capability to have. Now, at the same time, Mysonics makes pretty good cross-country speed, but the compromise of being a much smaller airframe. But with that, it only has 80 horsepower and burns about 4 gallons an hour, compared to, say, 12 to 15 gallons an hour for a real barn burner. Let's say you're looking at a bush plane or some kind of stole aircraft. Well, these are typically going to have slower cruising speeds, which means it's going to take you longer to get anywhere. The short takeoff is nice, but how much can it carry? Can it hold your dog and all that camping gear for that trip you've been dreaming of doing and still get off the ground and clear that 50-foot obstacle? How many people do you regularly plan on having with you in the airplane? In a perfect world, we could all have GA8 air vans or Quest Kodiaks, and they'd burn four gallons an hour just like a Sonex, and you could carry the whole family and all your gear and travel the world, and, and never mind the cost for a second. That's not reality. But you have to be honest with how often are you actually going to use that capability? Here's what Charlie from the Airplane Academy channel had to say about that. And there's a link to the full video in the description below. And so I thought a pretty good percentage of my time, I was going to be loading up a bunch of my friends or loading up the wife and the dog and going here and going there and all that stuff. And really when I go back and total it up in my logbook, if I did it, I bet that 95 plus percent of the time I am just by myself. That's not what he thought would be the case going into it. Number three is aircraft price. Now this one completely depends. There's so many different options and variables to consider on this one. But generally speaking, if you put two aircraft side by side, they're similarly equipped, similar performance characteristics, the experimental version is going to be cheaper. And there's always exceptions to that. It depends on the age of the airframe, any damage history, avionics it's equipped with, anything else you can come up with. And that brings us to number four, maintenance and inspection costs. With an experimental, as long as you're comfortable and capable with doing it, you can perform your own maintenance. Now with a certified, if you're not a licensed ANP, the owner or operator can perform preventative maintenance per 14 CFR Part 43. All other maintenance not outlined in that has to be performed by an ANP, and you know what that means, no money. Moving on to the annual inspections, on a certified you have to have an ANP with an IA, which is an inspection authorization, to be able to perform that. And price on that varies, but I always say plan on spending at bare minimum $1,000 and up to infinity. Depending on what's going on with a certified airplane, the sky's really the limit. There's been multiple times I've seen an annual that costs over $30,000 for an airplane that wasn't worth anywhere near that at the end of the day. Now, of course, with an experimental, if you built it, you can perform your own annual condition inspection. 
Now, if you bought it, you have to find a license A&P to do the inspection for you, but they don't have to be an IA. But here's the kicker. It may be difficult to find an A&P that's willing to sign off on an experimental, especially one they're not familiar with. And since we're on this subject, let's talk about parts pricing and availability for a moment. Now, you're probably sensing a common theme, but don't worry, there will be some points that will favor the certified here in a bit. Plain and simple, parts for certified aircraft are just more expensive. That's how it is. And many of them you can't install yourself, so now you're paying a labor cost too. One easy example we can look at is avionics. Two very similar units, one marked certified, one marked experimental. The certified is generally going to be more expensive. And then you have to pay somebody to put it in. Generally speaking, most experimental parts can be installed by you, but you may want to have an AMP or an avionics tech to look over certain things, just to make sure. In general, most certified aircraft have very good part support and availability, some older vintage models being the exception. On the flip side, there are experimentals out there that the companies are no longer in business, and so certain parts you may need to fabricate or source yourself. So that's something to consider. Now, the reality with many experimentals is that they typically have very good part support from the major companies. The major kit manufacturers like Vans, Sonex, Zenith, or Rands typically support their products very well, and most new parts can be had in a week or less. Number five is the variety of models out there. For every Cessna 150 or Piper Cherokee you see, there's at least a dozen different types of experimentals, and I'm sure there's plenty of models of experimentals you've never even heard of before. Now, the most common thing I hear when people see my airplane is they say, what is that? <laughs> you know, and I go through the whole spiel, it's a Sonex, blah, 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 and then there is a benefit to flying something that everybody's pretty much familiar with, but it can be a lot of fun and a real conversation starter to show up with something unique that people haven't seen before. Kind of like the GP4 that showed up at our poker run this year. But as mentioned before, parts support and availability may be lacking for that gorgeous one-of-a-kind scratch-built airplane. Whether you go certified or experimental, do your own research. Check out owner forums and type clubs, Facebook groups. Learn absolutely everything you can before pulling the trigger on that nice airplane. Point number six, insurance. And this is the one, as promised, will generally favor certified aircraft. I know, I know. All those wonderful points about experimentals were just setting you up for the big gotcha at the end, huh? And yes, but it can be a big one. It's something you need to know. There's no other way to say it. Regardless of your flight time and experience, insurance costs on experimental is going to be more than on a certified. It's just the way it is. And let's be honest, the costs for both continue to rise. And there's plenty of reasons for that, and I'll let another video explain that one for you. Now, a buddy of mine owns a Cessna 150, but because it's a certified and a tri-gear, He's only paying about $500 for the year hull and liability. Now on my Sonex, <laughs> oh man. Now on my Sonex, my quotes range between two and $3,000. Yikes. Now I don't know about every state, but where I'm at, aircraft insurance is not a requirement, but do you take that risk? You have to make the best decision for yourself. And regardless of what you buy, make sure to get multiple quotes from multiple companies or consider hiring a broker to do the job for you. Well, that's my six points for you, but don't just take my word for it. Head on out to your local airport and see what others have to say. See what other people's experiences are with buying and owning different types of aircraft. Be sure to attend your local EAA chapter meeting. There'll be plenty of owners of both types there. So do you go experimental or certified? What side do you come down on? Please let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you for watching, and if you want to see more videos about owning, working on, and of course, flying small airplanes, please check out our channel page and hit that subscribe button to see more from me at Less Seen Adventures.